should we or should we not um, change the way the playoff structure is is operated? And Sidney Crosby made a statement. Uh, I believe he said he thought you know one eight in each conference would be the right idea. Mm -hmm. I do agree. I do. I think there, there's a real balance here that interesting. And there's, there's a couple of things they're trying to balance. Number one is, is the schedule. So for the most part, the games that sell the best in markets are divisional games. Of course. So those are the, those are the big games. Now the problem you have is, and John knows this well, there's a difference between East and West in the East. Most Eastern teams don't care if the Western teams come. So, for example, Edmonton was in Pittsburgh recently. The game didn't sell out. So, but in the West, they want the Eastern teams, the more established, you know, most of the original six is in the East. The Flyers, the Penguins, those, those marquee teams are in the East. So, so for a few years, remember, the Eastern teams and Western teams didn't play each other home and home every year. It alternated. Right. But Western teams didn't like that. They want the Bruins to come every year. They want the Flyers to come every year. So you've got to balance that. I, I think there's also a move towards more divisional hockey. Um, the idea that the Islanders and Rangers only play each other three times this year, that the Oilers and Flames only play each other three times this year, and that their season series are both over, they both played their last game against each other in December. So, so you want to go to more divisional play. Can you do that and have a one through eight conference playoff format? You can. The problem is the teams are playing grossly unbalanced schedules. The way it stands now is most team schedules are roughly similar within a mm -hmm. conference. If you go to a heavier divisional schedule, they won't be. So if you have, say, a couple of weak teams in your conference that you're feasting on, you have, may have an advantage. Now, in the NFL, they don't care. I mean, teams obviously don't play a balanced schedule in the NFL, um, but it's a very different league. I I think it's hard to find that balance. Can you, and, and it's a philosophical question, Bob, do you want to have one through eight if teams are playing very dissimilar schedules? I, I don't have a problem with it. Some people yeah, do. I, I, I couldn't I, care I less. Do think, I do think, and by the way, I, I, at the same time that Gordon was doing his commentary, I did a poll on my Twitter account. Had more than 8,000 yeah. people vote. 72 or 73% yeah. said they wanted one versus eight. Yeah. Uh, so, but, so, but but I do think but I do think if we if we ever got to that court, you'd have to go to a balanced schedule in your conference, and then anything else is ancillary. So so the problem with that, John, is is that I, I agree with you that, that for, for fairness' sake, you'd have to have a more balanced schedule within the conference. The problem is you're trying to drive divisional rivalries, which sell more tickets. So so if you go to conference playoffs and Carolina plays. Carolina plays Buffalo in the playoffs. Does that does that drive a rivalry? It might if they met a bunch of times. Yeah. But 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 I I think there, there is a push within the league to go to more divisional playoffs, to go to go to strictly divisional playoffs in the first two rounds with a play in, with with the fifth. And place, you know we've had that. Teams. We've had that. Yeah. <laughs> We've, so, we, so, I but, think we've had every playoff format, by the way. Well, yeah. there, there has been. And, and no matter which one you come up with, I, I think you have to realize that no matter what you do, you're not going to please everyone. Right. The problem that I have is, you know, Toronto, Tampa Bay, Toronto, Boston, all the time. Right. Like so that's, that's what you're going to get every year. It's going to be one of the two teams, are, uh, you know, that you're going to be playing if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs, for example. Well, I mean, listen, remember the in everywhere. the 90s, Gord. How many times did Dallas play Edmonton? I mean, well, was it five I'll years? Look, or I'll, I'll go. I'll go back to the eighties. How many times Edmonton played Vancouver? Oh, I know. Like, you know, like so. I, I so so from our perspective, we probably don't want to see these matchups over and over again. I think you have to step back a little bit and and realize a couple of things. Number one, not every market is the same. Not everyone sells tickets the same way. So when you struggle to sell tickets, more divisional games matters for During the regular Detroit season. Red, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and in turn, more playoff matchups make those divisional rivalries even better. So the Detroit Red Wings don't sell out their games. So more games against Toronto, Buffalo, their divisional opponents, those are their big sellers. By the way, they didn't sell out last night for Edmonton. In, you know, in Detroit, in, yeah. In Detroit. Because, because as a, here, here's, the, here's the problem, and, and it, 
when, when you buy a hockey ticket, it's different than other sports. So, so when you go to watch Golden State play, Bob, so you buy a ticket to go watch the Golden State Warriors, Steph Curry is going to play 36 of the 48 minutes on average. Right. Yeah. He's going to get 25 points. He's going to hit some three-pointers. Like You're guaranteed that's going to happen. Connor McDavid goes to Detroit last night. He plays 21 minutes, 22 minutes. So he plays about a third of the game. He might, in fact, he probably won't score, or or the odds are 50-50 that he's going to score in the game. Yeah. It's the same as it's the same as baseball. Aaron Judge, I think Aaron Judge played nine games in Toronto last year. He homered in two of them. He he didn't he didn't homer in like 105 games last year. So if you're if you're selling individuals in baseball and hockey for the most part you're you're probably not selling the right thing in basketball you can because you're going to see them do their thing lebron james is not going to get zero points in the game you're going to see him score he's going to do his thing and he's going to play most of the game so in detroit last night john it's a great point like edmonton doesn't sell detroit it's just there's no historic rivalry as good as mcdavid is they're they're better off selling Buffalo, Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, and the and the other curveball in all of this is that teams like Ottawa and Winnipeg want to see all the Canadian teams more. So that's the other ancillary issue: East versus right. West. Where you how do you satisfy teams that you know? I mean, actually thrived and <laughs> thrived in many yeah. ways in the Canadian division. So I think that. The one thing I think that will be firm is team will visit every arena that the schedule matrix is. That is that is a given. So that's going to happen every year that, that you're going to all, – all the other 31 teams are going to come to your rink at least once a year. The question is, how do you divide up the other games? I do think that the idea of reducing the preseason to five games – look, the players are all in shape when they show up. You know, the, the preseason is a bit of a cash grab in some markets. Reduce the preseason to, to five games, go to an 84 game schedule and, and add more divisional games, I think has a lot of appeal. What does that do for the problem that we are addressing, though, is the, well, the 84 games instead of eight? Well, so, so, so what you would do is um, there's one proposal. So, right now, with your schedule, you play home and away against the other conference. That's okay. 32 games. You play the other division in your own conference three times a year. So that's 24 games. Then you play, as it stands right now, you play 26 against the team in your own division. If you go to an 84-game schedule and reduce the number of games against the other division in your conference, you would now have 36 divisional games. You would play each team five times with an additional sixth game against one added opponent. So you get Toronto-Montreal six times in a year. Is that too many? We have to separate ourselves from the fan experience. And, and the fan experience has changed dramatically, John and Bob, from, from previous years. Very few people, very few season ticket holders go to more than half of a team's games in a season. Well, I, I think that's high, Gord. Well, I, 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 I think that's I'm probably being generous. So, yeah. so, so the idea that we're saying, well, that's too many games against, you know, six games a year against Boston is too many. Most season ticket holders might only see the Bruins once. 